Assalamu alaikum. It is super windy today. <clears throat> like all day it's been just bad high winds. Um, I'm going to show you where it tore the roof off this chicken pen here. I'm guessing the winds are like around 15 to 20 miles an hour. I don't know for sure, but just guessing. It kind of calmed down a little bit, but this morning they were just super bad. And the trees just all look like they're going to bend right over and break off. But anyways, I wanted to show you where I tore this roof off. This chicken pen. Should be a pretty easy fix, thankfully. It looked like it just tore it off to the side so I could flop it back down and screw it back on. <clears throat> Actually, when I came out here to feed this morning, the chicken pen was just a disaster. I mean, there were chickens everywhere. It blew all the tarps off everything. All my, uh, dome pens back here that I had roosters in they were all blown over into the tree line and uh, there was just chickens everywhere roosters out fighting so <clears throat> just quite a mess so I me and my brother were out here chasing chickens for a couple hours and I did get started feeding until probably about 11, 11, 30, 12 and it's definitely changed my plans for the day unexpectedly. <clears throat> Show you what I've been working on since I got the slats. what I've got done on the summer kitchen so far. Got that top half of this wall and I pieced the front end around the windows and as you see where the new wood is. And uh, also the back wall there was a section that was not done. And so I finished that up. So now I just have to, basically this is the last wall I have to close off right here. And uh, then put the roof on and I was just gonna put two screen doors in the front here and maybe dig the floor down and put a pallet floor in there and go from there. But anyways, that's how that's coming along, thanks to the slats. It's uh, been able to get that done. <clears throat> also, I'll show you on the in the uh, wash house. Um, I've started putting down a pallet floor in there, so I'll show you that. So this is the floor that I started here in the wash house. Um, basically I just started with uh, three pallets, I nailed them together and then I took a level and tried to make it level as possible. Then I did three more, nailed them together and nailed it to that edge and made sure the edge was level with the previous edge and then like took blocks and put under it to make this floor level etc and continuing on I'll do the same thing with these make another row of three pallets here and I gotta move some of this furniture out of here but that's how it's coming this all this pallet all this um, plywood was free the neighbor was 
uh, he does that, you know, like scrapping and junk pickup bitch, removal business. So he got all this was given to him to be thrown out. And uh, I'm just laying this and going to lay this on top of the pallets once I get it done and screw it down. So there will be a little floor in here. And then this will just kind of be like a lounge area type thing. And, uh, you know, like guests could sleep out here if they were staying for, you know, an extended period. And then the other half over here is is the uh, where the wash house is, or the washroom where we do the laundry and everything. So my plan is to... Uh, Finish this floor here, just all pallets and then wood floor there. And then uh, this side here, I'd like to dig it down. We started already a little bit and uh, put just fill this whole floor here in with pea stone. And uh, so, anyways, that's how it's coming along. We are getting hammered with a snowstorm. Um, I wanted to show you guys real quick a door that you can make. This is a door that I use quite a bit um, in my chicken pens. Uh, and I came up with this idea because of like I have to build a lot of chicken pens um, for the different breeds that I have. And there's been times where I had a lot of wood but I didn't have a lot of money and I needed hinges. and seem like the hinges and all the hardware for the doors and everything costs a lot of money um, when you had to build so many. Uh, so I came up with the idea of putting my doors on track so that uh, I, I could just use all wood material. I didn't have to buy hinges and um, so basically you just, this is a 2x2 two two actually. Um, this is my door here and we make it so that it slide there and then you have the inside of the chicken coop there. I've pretty much been making uh, all my doors like this and it's just a handy way just thought I'd share the idea with you guys so that uh, something to save a little money. Just, I always leave a little gap at the top of the door and of course you want to make sure that your door is much, uh, you know, at least half as uh, wide as your track because if it's all the way here then it'll be tight and sometimes like if you don't paint it right away the wood will swell and then it won't slide good so I always make sure my track is like twice as wide as the door here this way so it'll slide easy. And then I always leave a gap here so that there's a little bit of wiggle room and uh, that makes it so much easier for opening and closing the door. Just if there's enough room so the door can kind of maneuver then when it slides it will uh, it slides easy. I'll show you on this one here. This is another one. But, and it's just really handy and I make this little lip here so that uh, it's easier to um, you know, kind of seals it off on that end there and it's not so easy for like an animal to push it open or something but uh, it's still very easy to slide in slide open and ta -da, you have a chicken coop and all it was was boards you could save money you didn't have to buy hinges or whatever so Hopefully that's helpful to somebody. And it's just not much to them really, just like I say, you make it two tracks. I usually use a level to make sure the boards are level, that way the door will slide and then you just need a piece like this here so the door don't fall off. You screw that on there and uh, you got a sliding door. So I got it all done. I'll just show you. I put a little stop here so it doesn't slide all the way off that way. And inside the chicken coop. 
I've got a little bit of work to do yet inside, but I definitely got the door done. But anyways, it's just easy, and if you got a bunch of wood laying around, then save you a little money on hardware. To help somebody out. So I thought I, like I said last time, I'd share uh, three more points on um, how to be happy. So um, the first one that I had in mind was um, setting goals and like the importance of setting goals. Um, if you don't, basically, I'm not sure if you heard that saying that uh, uh, fail to plan, plan to fail. So um, basically, in order to be happy, you have to set, you have to be able to set goals that are reachable as well. But setting goals in your life, having uh, goals to reach every day that you can reach, and then it gives you a sense of satisfaction. And if you are able to meet goals um, in your life, and um, uh, uh, being able to like track your progress. So it's I think a lot of people why they don't feel like you know happy or feel like they ever achieved anything in life is because they kind of don't have any plan or any goal to, to achieve. Like they're just kind of living life and with no plans for the future, no serious plans. They might have like plans for the future, like you know. I want to be a movie star or whatever, but the reality from their day-to-day -day life is not actually, they're not actually doing anything to achieve that goal. So I think setting a goal that you can achieve and that it can't be something that's just, you know, a dream that will never happen. It's got to be something achievable. But, you know, like say building a house or setting a goal where you save up money to buy property or, you know, something to better your life. And it's a goal that's reachable. Um, setting goals and then being able to keep track of them uh, will it give you a sense of satisfaction uh, in the end. So that's one point. Um, and I personally, like, I make a list of, like, every spring I make a list of all the things on the farm that I want to um, have achieved by the following year. Like, things I need, maybe I need to build another goat pen, maybe I need a bigger woodshed, whatever, whatever my goals are for the year. And I try to make sure that the goals are reasonable, something that I can do within reason. And I make a list of those, and then uh, just throughout the year, I work on that list, make sure I, I, and there's like satisfaction to be able to cross all the things off. And in the end, I can see what I, do from one year to the next, like the, the improvement of my farm from, you know, what it was like last year and this year, maybe I painted all the buildings, um, you know, next year, maybe I'll plant more flowers, uh, uh, whatever, but just being able to track your progress and do something that you can see that, that you've achieved something, um, helps to give you a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment. And kind of relieve that feeling of having no purpose. <clears throat> Another important thing I think that helps with being happy is to give, like to be giving to other people. If you just focus on how to make yourself happy and all the things that you need, it's actually, in a sense, stop being selfish because you're just focused on yourself, you just focus on me, 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 and from what I see, those people are the most unhappy people because there, there's never enough. They're, they're never happy. And when they do achieve something and it, it's never enough, they want more and more and more. And like people that are more giving, more charitable, people that dedicate their life to helping others, um, they seem to be more happy. Like, you know, people that, you hear of these people that, you know, travel the world, travel to these different countries and spend six, eight months, you know, somewhere in some country building a village, building a school. It seems like the people that are more 
charitable in your life are, are more happy. And if you're feeling down, one thing you can do is help somebody out. Go find somebody that's, um, you know, not as well off as you and hook them up with something that you've got that you know that they could really use and it will make you feel happy. Um, and it's a good, a good way to be happy. It's helping somebody out that will always bring you more lasting happiness than doing things for yourself because you know satisfying your um, need to, to, to have this emotion happy happy emotion and um, last of all um, and I think this is also very important um, I guess there was a study done. This is actually something that uh, our uh, imam or you know, kind of like our preacher brought up and um, it was probably three weeks ago now in the service that we had. But he was bringing up that there was a, a study that was done by Harvard like over 70 years ago where they, they had this group of graduates and they followed them throughout their whole life for 70 years until they basically all got old and were, were you know, either had died or were on their deathbed and they they followed them for 70 years throughout their life and they documented to, to see which ones achieved success and happiness in their life and versus the ones that didn't and um, unanimously all the ones that um, were happy and and had a decent healthy life were the people who um, had strong, healthy relationships. Like, the people who were rich weren't, weren't happy. The people, there was people who were poor who weren't happy. But the people who had very strong, um, healthy family relationships and friendships, um, those were the people who, at the end of the day, um, you know, died with a smile on their face and they had all their friends and loved ones around them. And in the end, they were the ones who were successful and happy. So, um, I believe that, you know, God created us in a family with the family for a purpose. And if we want to be happy, one one major thing that, that in this day and age is really um, kind of like against the grain. Everybody's always talking about how their family is. And, you know, they get their family gets on their nerves and they just cut off their family, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is if you really want to be happy, you should try to build um, strong relationships with your family, with your family members, extended family and friends and neighbors and those kind of people who are outgoing and, and helpful to their neighbors and you know, try to be there for, and loyal, true loyal people and build strong relationships. Those are the people who, according to this study, uh, uh, were happy at the end. And um, so I guess that's the gist of my uh, my thoughts and feelings on how to be happy um, and hopefully this is helpful to somebody and hopefully somebody can be benefited from it I'd love to hear uh, what you you all think about it and what your thoughts are on it and talk to you next time inshallah peace